When I talk to groups of youth sport parents, I always ask the question, how do you think children want parents to behave at youth sport events? Nervous laughter is invariably followed by looks of deep contemplation, a few sighs, and someone saying something like, oh, probably not the way we usually behave. And when I speak to parents, they are always very attentive as I share the results of my doctoral dissertation, where I ask children to describe how parents usually behave at youth sport events and how they want parents to behave at youth sport events. So according to children, how do parents behave at youth sport events? Basically, they play one or more of four different roles. First, some act like supportive parents by attending games and engaging what I call attentive silence, sitting quietly but paying close attention during the game and cheering at appropriate times, i.e. when somebody scores a goal or makes a basket, things kids want parents to do. And they also want parents to provide encouragement and praise when the ball is not in play. Second, some parents act like demanding coaches, providing unsolicited advice during timeouts, shouting instructions while the ball is in play, and expressing what I call critical encouragement. As in, oh, come on, you can do better than that. Critical encouragement includes a positive message that means, I believe you can do it, delivered in a tone of voice that makes it clear to the children that their parent is not satisfied with their performance thus far. Critical encouragement is universally rejected by children who have a particular dislike for the exact wording, oh, come on, you can do better than that. Children express consistent disapproval of parents who act like demanding coaches during games. And this makes sense developmentally because school-age kids tend to think in black and white terms. And although they accept feedback and instructions from their coaches, they don't appreciate instructions from parents because in kid terms, they're not the coach. When I asked one eight-year-old boy how parents usually behave at his soccer games, he got really animated and said, they're usually like, Aaron, pass it to Ryan. Ryan, pass it to Daniel. Daniel, pass it to Lewis. No, pass it to Blair. And they treat us like we're remote control cars. Third, some parents act like crazed fans by drawing attention to themselves by cheering fanatically or by arguing with coaches and officials, blaming coaches and officials, yelling mean things at participants, and disrupting games by walking onto the field or court to confront participants, coaches, or officials. Not surprisingly, kids universally reject the crazed fan behaviors. Probing a little further, I would sometimes ask follow-up questions to kids like, what if you were playing basketball and the ref was so bad that the basketball bounced off the wall of the gym and the ref still didn't call it? If the official was that bad, should parents yell at him? And I wasn't able to get a single child to say, yes, the parent should yell at that referee. The only circumstance in which children said it was okay for parents to yell at officials was if the game got so rough that someone was likely to get hurt unless a parent were to intervene. So protective intervention is the only form of parental yelling that was considered acceptable by children. And finally, some parents act like distracted spectators by talking too much to other parents, dividing their attention between the game and a younger sibling, by reading a book or magazine, and here's the big one, by staring at their cell phone during the game. Oh, come on, what's the big deal? I'm a millennial mom and I need to check my Instagram feed almost as often as I need to inhale. Well, think about it. Especially for younger children, five, six, seven, eight-year-olds, it's kind of a mom look or daddy, watch this sort of thing. When elementary school age children are performing, it is especially important that their primary attachment figures, usually mom and dad, are paying attention to every moment of their awesomeness. Some kids did say that they like it when parents take pictures of video, 
because it makes them feel like they're doing something important. But go easy on the smartphone. If you're looking through the viewfinder of a camera, you're still watching a game more or less. But if you're posting pictures or checking your Facebook feed, they may feel ignored. So to paraphrase the great philosopher Kenny Rogers, you gotta know when to watch them and know when to post them. There'll be time enough for status updates when the game is done. Being a really good parent at a youth sport event is actually pretty simple. Attend games, remain silent while the ball is in play, cheer after a basket is made or a goal is scored, provide praise and encouragement to the participants during breaks in the action, and on the rare occasion when the game gets so rough that things are getting out of control and someone might get hurt, stand up for the safety of the kids through protective intervention. But things that are simple are not always easy because watching a child participate in a youth sport event can be a profoundly emotional experience for parents. But the supportive parent role provides a standard to which every parent can aspire.